This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Church Street United Methodist Church proudly presents Rejoice. Good morning and welcome to Rejoice, the weekly devotional program brought to you by Church Street United Methodist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. My name is Matt Hampton and I am pleased to be one of the pastors at Church Street. I'm also pleased to be spending my time with you this morning. My sermon text this morning is taken from the New Testament book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, a passage in which the Apostle Paul writes about the glory of God. We believe we have encountered the glory of God, the living presence of God in Christ, and we believe the glory of God is reflected all around us in nature, in circumstance, in culture, and in us. We don't always perceive it, but when we do perceive it and experience it, we believe it transforms us. In keeping with this conviction, I'd like to share a poem with you. The poem is entitled, The Sound of Water in the Ears of the Thirsty by the great poet Rumi. Here Rumi urges us to be awake to God's presence and God's love. The sound of water in the ears of the thirsty. The poet writes, the real work belongs to someone who desires God and has severed himself from every other work. The rest are like children who play together until it gets dark for these few short days. Or like someone who awakes and springs up still drowsy and then is lulled back to sleep by the suggestion of an evil nurse who says, go to sleep, my darling. I won't let anyone disturb you. If you are wise, you yourself will tear up your slumber by the roots, like the thirsty one who heard the noise of water. God says to you, I am the sound of water in the ears of the thirsty. I am rain falling from heaven. Spring up, lover, show your excitement. How can you hear the sound of water and fall back asleep? Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we have heard the challenge spoken to us, arise, sleeper, and awake. Enliven us, we pray. Awaken our hearts. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Reveal your glory and life to us and give us the courage and the faith to embrace it and so to be changed by it. As Christ has offered us springs of living water that may well up within us and never run dry, help us to drink deeply this day. Amen. And now a song, the song, I Will Arise, performed by harpist Ann Jackson of Church Street United Methodist.
Our psalm for today is the 42nd psalm, which is very much in keeping with today's theme about the life and glory of God for which we long. The psalmist writes, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O my, o my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him again, my help and my God. Once again, let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that, being taught by you in the Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, our lesson today is taken from a letter the second letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in the ancient Greek city of Corinth, chapter 3, verses 7 through 12, and then verses 17 and 18. Now, if the ministry of death, chiseled in letters on stone tablets, came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze at Moses' face because of the glory of his face, glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once had glory has lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if what was set aside came through glory, much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then we have such a hope we act with great boldness. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a problem I'd like to consider today, and this problem might well be characterized as the problem of Maria. How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? How do you find the word that means Maria? A flibber to gibbet, a will o' the wisp, a clown. Many a thing you would like to tell her Many a thing she ought to understand, but how do you make her stay and listen to all you say? How do you keep a wave upon the sand? Oh, how do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you hold a moonbeam in your hand? It seems to me there's something in that song, from the sound of music, of course, that describes all of us to one degree or another. Aren't we all to one degree or another like Maria? Are we not all sadly changeable? 
and being changeable, are we not also fickle, fallible, fleeting? Mark Twain once said, there's a great deal of human nature in people. We're easily distracted from one thing to the next. We're often untrustworthy or unreliable, either out of malice or more often out of ignorance or incompetence. We don't keep our New Year's resolutions. We change our minds from month to month about who would be a good presidential candidate. We don't call or email one another the way we said we would. We've built a world with things like war and Comcast customer service in it. Even those among us who are as solid as a rock, those people who seem utterly reliable and unchangeable, even those individuals are mortal like the rest of us and subject to the vagaries of time, weakness, and mortality. As we read in the epistle of James, what is your life? For you are mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. How do you solve a problem like Maria, a flibber to gibbet, a will-o'-the-wisp, a clown. That we are changeable is perhaps our weakness, but I would say that to be changeable is also our greatness. Because we are changeable, we are also hopeful. Because we are changeable, we are creative. Because we are changeable, we fall in love. We compose symphonies. We send little robots to Mars. We throw bir surprise birthday parties. Because we are changeable, we are capable of becoming something new and of doing new things. And that is the point of the sound of music, of course. Silver white winters melt into spring. Me follows Ray, which follows Doe and Maria brings her renewing music with her wherever she goes. Maria can be a problem, it is true. Human nature can be a problem, but Maria also brings life. Now this is an idea which is central to our faith, and the idea goes something like this. God's life is a life of infinite peace, joy, and delight. That's what it's like to be God. It's awesome infinitely awesome. And God calls us to share in that life. And that is the essence of salvation from the perspective of Christian faith. Everything else is a means to this end. Forgiveness is only a means to an end. Spiritual practice is only a means to an end. Religious practice is only a means to an end. The purpose of these things is to perceive the life and the glory of God all around us and within us to participate in that life and to share that life with others. We have been given life in the body, biological life, but here we are offered something more than that. As Jesus says in John's Gospel, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In our reading today from 2 Corinthians, Paul is talking about the same thing. He refers to the glory of God and the Spirit of God as well as to the life of God, but in this context, these things are practically synonymous. Glory, Spirit, life. Paul tells us that the glory of God is reflected all around us. Where specifically is this glory reflected? I would argue that it can be discerned in every good thing we know. This glory of God, this life of God, is visible in every beautiful thing. In art, in nature, in laughter, in good food, companionship, in loyalty, and heroism, and most of all, in love. And it is a reflective glory, Paul says. The way that the moon reflects the sun, all created things reflect the light of God's glory from beyond themselves. Most of all, though, it is visible in Christ, whom Paul describes as the image of God, whom we follow and in whom we place our trust. Paul recalls the story of Moses on Mount Sinai from Exodus chapter 34, and how in that story, Moses got a tiny glimpse of the glory of God. 
Even though it was only the tiniest glimpse, that glory was reflected in Moses' face like sunburn, so much so that Moses had to wear a veil over his face to protect the people of Israel from it. The reality, Paul says, for us is different. Christ has revealed the glory of God all around us. Christ's incarnation has exposed the glory of God in all of creation and all of life, and we, with unveiled faces, behold this glory of God, this Spirit of God, this life of God. And beholding it, we desire it. Desiring it, we receive it. And receiving it, we are transformed by it. Which brings me back to my original point about the problem of Maria. There's one major obstacle for us in sharing the fullness of God's life. It's that last part I just mentioned about our transformation. That's the point of the story of Moses' veil. The people did not want to see the glory of God on Moses' face because of the uncanny transforming effect they feared it might have on them. And that wasn't an irrational response either because we're told in Exodus 24 and 17 that the glory of God seemed to them like, quote, a devouring fire. The glory of God as a devouring fire. It's the sort of thing you want to see, but you don't want to see. Like a YouTube video, you start and then immediately close. Rudolf Otto described our experience of the divine as a, quote, mysterium tremendum et fascinans, which is to say a mystery before which we tremble and yet find fascinating, to which we are repelled and attracted at the same time. It's easy enough to look for the love and glory of God as reflected in nature and art and the laughter of children from a distance, as it were. But truly to pursue that glory, that life, to behold it, to step into it, and to embrace it, to seek God in that way, might change us in ways that we could scarcely imagine. The idea by itself is terrifying. It was terrifying for the Israelites, and it's terrifying for us. When we think of some alien power overwhelming us and transforming us, our minds turn to horror. We think of the pod people or the invasion of the body snatchers or the Borg from Star Trek The Next Generation. We cherish our autonomy above all things. We cherish our control over our own lives. And so we resist the life of God even as we desire it above all things. But this is where our changeableness comes back into the equation. We are changeable. And because we are changeable, we are fallible. We sometimes fail to keep our commitments. We sometimes grow distracted from what is important. We forget things. Both as a society and often as individuals, we veer one way and then we veer the other. We drive each other crazy sometimes. But the underlying truth is that we were made to change. We were made to grow. We were made to be transformed. This is the life to which our faith calls us. All of us, Paul says, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. It is not a thing to be feared, but a thing to be embraced. We are invited to become, quote, partakers of the divine nature, the very nature and life of God, according to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. For those of us who don't like what we've become in life, we are given hope that we can become something new, for those of us who don't believe that old dogs can learn new tricks, we're reminded that in Christ, old ways have passed away. New things have come. For those of us who have grown complacent in life, we hear again the call, arise, sleeper, and wake up. At our Beacon of Hope ministry, which we have at Church Street in partnership with Vestal United Methodist Church in South Knoxville, we host Getting Ahead classes for individuals mired in poverty. 
These getting ahead classes have proven to be places where individual lives are fundamentally transformed. And one of the fundamental starting points for these participants, the investigators as they're called in these classes, is something that they call the theory of change. When we believe that we can change, when we see that life that God has, God's life itself in store for us to be shared with us, what's called in the Getting Ahead classes our future story. And when we finally decide to embrace that life, there is no limit to the transformation that is possible. Each moment holds hope of new life and new glory for us. It's not always easy to embrace that new life. Sometimes it probably feels well nigh impossible. But this is the good news we hear today. To whatever degree we open ourselves to transformation and life this day, God has that much life to give us and more. To the degree we offer God the changeable raw materials of our lives, God can do something truly great with us. Amen. We worship together now as the Church Street UMC treble choir sings, My Song is Love Unknown. As always, before we close, we'd like to invite you to join us sometime at Church Street United Methodist Church in Knoxville, if you're able. We worship on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and again at 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays at noon. If you're thinking of bringing your family, we have wonderful ministries with children and youth. If you want to participate in a faith community that makes a difference in the world, we have many opportunities to volunteer and to serve including our benevolence program every week on Monday, our soup kitchen every week on Thursday, our United Methodist Women's Sharing Shops, and our Beacon of Hope program, which I mentioned earlier, at Vestal UMC in South Knoxville. We offer many opportunities to study and to learn, as well as small groups and a diverse range of Sunday school gatherings. And as you know, if you've watched this program for any time at all, we also have a music program that must be heard to be believed. 
It's also the case that if you are a spiritual seeker or someone who is uncertain about what you believe, but interested in participating in a community of caring and thoughtful people, we would love to hear from you and to get to know you. You can find out more about our church online at churchstreetumc.org or simply come by sometime and say hello. For now, thank you so much for joining us this day. It is, as always, an honor and a joy to be with you wherever you are watching. On this day and every day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Members and friends of Church Street United Methodist Church, your downtown church at the corner of Henley and Main, would like to thank you for joining Rejoice. Please send us your comments and suggestions and be sure to tune in next Sunday at this same time for Rejoice. <laughs>